Welcome to this for me much anticipated edition of Blooms for You. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. I appreciate you so much. And this is why I do Blooms for You, to be able to dedicate orchids that come into bloom to each and every name that I see coming up on my comments. That is a massive support to my channel. Everybody that subscribes that I can see has subscribed, massive support on my channel. Everybody that becomes an Orchid Ninja, which is how we define ourselves in my membership, massive support on my channel. So the Blooms For You is the way I say thank you on an individual basis based on orchids that come into bloom. And Maxillaria variabilis, cousin it, happens to still be exploding in gorgeous blooms considering what he has been through in the last two weeks. I am here in southern Spain and if you have not been on my channel and not seen videos before, I have had two weeks of absolutely diabolical conditions. The temperatures were so low and we were inundated with rain, pretty much topped off with a phenomenon called Kalima here, where the Sahara Desert sand, including rain, drops down in our area. And I bring all this up just to tell you how much it means to me that I do have orchids in bloom that I can dedicate because we know that orchids need light in order to bloom. And I have had no light for two weeks straight, at least the last five days, they have been in perpetual darkness. Maybe a tinge of orange coming through the windows as well because of the way the sky was lit up due to the clouds being fully loaded with the Sahara sand. Anyway, yes, this introduction is a little bit longer than I normally do, but I really, really want to take advantage of the fact that I'm standing outside. I've got sunshine to my right and cousin it is to my left in the shade. I cannot believe that I have the contrasting light back on my patio. How long this is going to last, I do not know. It'll last for the rest of the day, but trust me, I'm not going to take up all your time. I am just so thrilled to be able to see my orchids outdoors again. Don't get me wrong, I love me my torrential rain, I love me my tropical rain, but not what we've had in the past weeks. It's far, far too cold. The orchids did not go outside throughout this whole time. They've been cooped up indoors. So to have them outdoors again was a massive relief. Right, this edition would be nothing without blooms, and we've got ourselves some. Thankfully, some orchids are true, true fighters. So let's go have a look, see what made it through, which buds held on and bloomed out, and who came up on the list this time around. Cousin It blooms for you if you are not named here today. Can I have a drum roll, please? First time bloomer for me, for Tarja Alexandra. This is another drum roll, maybe? <laughs> This is Rinculalia Catlia Sunya Green. Yes, I finally have a Sunya Green in bloom. I have two Sunya Greens, but the mailman has been blasting his buds on me for the last three years. And this regular, pardon the description, but this regular unnamed Sunya Green has been a few years with me. And then I divided her and sent off a division to the orchid room. So she was in a constant state of acclimating and getting over the stress I was putting her under. But <laughs> enter 2022 and here we have Rinculalia Sunya Green. First time bloomer for me. And I dedicate this bloom to you, Tarja Alexandra, for your support on my channel. Now what you see here, the reflection of the facade is somewhat washing out the color of the lip and the petals and sepals. So I will be inserting some pictures of the true green <laughs> that she is showing me. I am a big fan of green blooms. So I hope Tarja Alexandra, I am not disappointing you with this dedication. And I hope that you do like green blooms as well. And oh my goodness, does she smell good. She has a very, very clear fragrance of lemon and lime. Mojito without the mint. There is a hint of sweetness, but it is so deliciously pungent, citrusy, and so fresh. So her color and her fragrance, they just match and go really well together. This bloom has now been open five days. Because she's a first time bloomer, I am not entirely sure if her cup shape is normal and if she's going to stay that way. But because my conditions are working against me a little bit, I also do not know how long this bloom will last. So after five days, she's still a bit cupped, but I did not want to waste this opportunity because looking at her from the front, wow, 
If she were open, she would span my hand. That's about 20 centimeters from the end of my thumb to the end of my pinky. She is just amazing. The texture as well is strong. It's not waxy, but it's very, very strong. Everything about this orchid is just in your face. Now she looks a little bit ratty from the other end here because of everything she's been through. The front lead that was the prettiest and best grown lead that went off and away to the orchid room. And I capped the back lead that all came a little bit ratty and then it grew me. This pseudobulb here last year that didn't amount to anything except roots, which is great. And then this pseudobulb continued to progress throughout the winter. And despite my low light levels, look at the anthocyanin. So this orchid is giving me hope that if my conditions and circumstances stay the way they are throughout this winter, which have been a nightmare, at least Sunya Green should be a regular bloomer from now on. So Tarja Alexandra, a mojito without the mint looking and staring at you to say thank you very, very much for your support on my channel. You are so appreciated and I hope that you are enjoying the conditions in your part of the world. She is so pretty. <laughs> she is labeled Tolumnia firm white. Now, if that is true or not, I do not know. Basically, do I care? Yes, because I'm dedicating these blooms to Lisa Todman and Kathy de Vries, and it would be nice to give you the exact identity of the Tolumnia that is blooming right now. However, I can only at this point in time guess. Maybe 80% I'm convinced it's a firm white. Whatever it is, Lisa Todman and Kathy de Vries, I hope you love Tolumnias. I thought she was also so very, very cute and ladylike. And for you ladies, she blooms as a thank you. And seeing the next two names were ladies, I thought this is perfect. My little firm white blooms for two wonderful ladies that are supporting my channel. And I very, very much appreciate that. You can see that she's in her little basket, which is back here. Her spike is not as long and massive and cumbersome as some Tolumnia spike, but she is a very, very vigorous little Tolumnia. Thank goodness for that. She came through all my mistakes of 2020. Check this out. I have another spike. And I have a few noises beyond the hedge that are rudely interrupting my dedication, for which I apologize. When you're in the middle of moving something, the hand pointing something, switching the position of the orchid, and then all of a sudden there's a noise, it's very, very difficult to put on the brakes and start again. So anyway, hope that doesn't take away from these cuties. Lisa Todman, Kathy de Vries, this spike blooms for you. Thank you to both of you so much. Look how the new ones are still with a little bit of a pink skirt and as they age, they become white. So, you know, again, 80%, I am convinced this is possibly a firm white. Maybe I can start moving away from what I've been saying in the past that my tolumnias are like a box of chocolates. I should just trust what is on the label. <laughs> I say that with a little bit of irony in my voice. <laughs> Anywho, waiting for the next spike to open. I hope that that does not last. Lisa Todman, Kathy de Vries. Thank you so very, very much for your support here on my channel. I hope that you're doing well in your part of the world. Okay, we seem to have a little bit of a mess on our hands here, but let me explain. Nicole Allen, first of all, I want to draw attention to the fact that this dedication goes to you. I know that you like Tolumnias and I have a gorgeous little Tolumnia pink beige in bloom, even though it's a branch. These blooms are amazing. I am not going to waste them. You see the top branch right here was my first choice. I've got a, I'm being photobombed by pomegranate back there. <laughs> But here's my first choice, but they actually just collapsed on me because what I do is on the daily, I bring my Tolumnias in and out of my grow space. If it is a somewhat warmish day, even if it is overcast, the Tolumnias come outside and the constant in and out, in and out will make blooms get confused and collapse. So we're just going to nip these off just to make it look a little bit more tidy. 
because the blooms that I'm not going to waste are right down here on a branch. The other branch is trying to branch again up here. I'm not gonna waste those either. We'll do the best we can, but isn't this an amazing color? Ah, oh, so good. Now I have two other tulumnias that are called pink brished. Let me explain this one as well, because this is called pink beige. And I do believe this one could be correct as well, because she is a little bit more on the colored side on her petals. My pink brished is white. These aren't, and they are not white even as they bloom normally and open up. So pink beige might actually match right here. They are so cute. I hope that you like them, Nicole. I want to say thank you so very, very much for your support here, Nicole Allen. Look at that. It is a very overcast day. I suppose that is good. At least we get some sense of color. Let me see if I can change the screen a little bit to show you the true color because they are a shocking pink, but in a more subdued form. So you can see how that changes a little bit there. Love them, love them. And also, yes, they are larger than my pink brished. These blooms are not like double the size larger, but they are larger. So I think pink beige is the identity of these Tulumnias. Nicole Allen, either way, I think they're gorgeous and I hope that you like them too. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. So appreciate it. It's always something. <laughs> Kathleen Intermedia. Yes, she blooms for you. It's always something. And I think I remember correctly that you like the big blousy Kathleen blooms the blooms that I had tagged with your name, the buds blasted. So, ooh, it was a long wait to get something Cattleya to bloom for you. Even though this bloom is not exactly big and blousy, she is more compact and finer in her structure, I hope. It's always something that you like a Cattleya Intermedia as well. And also, if I may add, <laughs> quite fitting for today, it's always something. I was going around the patio trying to make sure that I could get this bloom into the viewfinder properly because it wasn't that easy to get a cleaner background considering I have sun today and the white facade is reflecting, of course, white on a white bloom. Wash out the colors completely, why won't you? So I went somewhere else on the patio and then my background was full of buckets with red rainwater from the recent rain that we had that dumped a load of Sahara sand on us. So yes, it's always something, but I think, I think this is a good angle and we can appreciate the bloom and I can say thank you to you properly for your support on my channel. It's always something. <laughs> So having gone all around that rigmarole, I hope you like Cattleya Intermedia Blooms. Unfortunately, I cannot appreciate her beautiful rose sugary fragrance that she normally exudes because my temperatures are too low and I didn't have any sun since she's bloomed out, which is now approximately four days from the point of filming. But still, she is gorgeous. And she borders on a miracle because considering the circumstances, I can only say, yeah, I am happy to have at least one of them to give to you. It's always something. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for your support. I really wanted to showcase this orchid and dedicate her with a fantastic background. Circumstances are such at the moment that I cannot do that without losing the intricate detail of the blooms because of a reflecting white facade. And yes, I say reflecting without any regrets whatsoever because finally I have a reflecting white facade. It has been so dull for so long and my Lelia Alvarenguensis is now showing herself to almost perfection. And I would like to take the opportunity to dedicate these blooms to gardening with Geet Kumar, Ryan Rizzo, cute Scottish cat Glory and Oihan Abar. I still have two more buds to open. Considering the circumstances, I am not going to miss out because the first bloom had already opened like a week ago. 
She's a first time bloomer for me, so I don't know how long these blooms last and I'm not gonna miss out on the opportunity to showcase her, even though my background is all a little bit whack and doesn't really do her beauty justice. But if we can just focus on the blooms, the background will fade away. <laughs> Lelia Alvarenguenses, my first time bloomer. She is obviously not fragrant, but oh my goodness, she is amazing. Look at where that orchid is. She's all the way down there. <laughs> the fact that I still have this spike and Mr. Gecko hasn't broken it is because it was far too cold for Mr. Gecko. He is not even out of the woodwork yet. He is not even part of the equation. I'm hoping that I can keep these in focus because they're just gorgeous. <laughs> this little frilly lip, everything about this is so charming except the fact the spike just comes out of, let's say, nowhere and is just like, well, here I am. Oh, beautiful. Love it. So thank you so much. Gardening with Geet Kumar, Ryan Rizzo, cute Scottish cat Glory and Oihan Abar for your support on my channel. I am very, very happy to be able to dedicate finally my blooming Lelia Alvarenguenses to you as a massive thank you for your support on my channel. I was toying with the idea of not dedicating my Colmenara Maasai Red Blooms to anyone because they are not pristine. They are growing beautifully, but because of the circumstances and the inclement weather that we had, they are somewhat dusty. I'm going to do it anyway. I feel it's such a shame to let these blooms go to waste because of a little bit of Sahara dust on them. So here we go. Carol Burton. Sandy Watkins, Laura Lake, World of Flowers, which is a Russian name that I looked up in Google, Kan Ho Duong, Yuli Chen, Ann Liu, Miss Angie, Sheila Broad, Harvey Schneider, Xander Zhang, Felix Candelario, David Needs, Ina Slukov, Matene Andy, Jean Kenny, Plantas Epifitas y Terrestres Guatemala, Jane Sultan, and Tok Tok Tracks. I know this is a very long list to sit through if you're watching this video, but you know what? I have this gorgeous orchid in bloom. I have a lot of names to get to. I don't want people to think that they've been forgotten. So all of you, I want to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I really hope you're not disappointed that they're not 100% perfect. I have tried to wash them off as best as I could with some plain RO water, but it's almost a pointless exercise. But I also don't want to waste them. We have still got some really bad weather coming up. That means that possibly in about a week's time, these will be gone. And I love this orchid so much that I don't want to just let it go to waste. I have also attempted to use a very soft paintbrush trying to get into the velvety texture of the bloom. No chance, no chance. Still, my Colmenara Maasai Red, she is gorgeous. I've got six spikes on her. I'm gonna be breaking it up. So the names that I've just mentioned, they are just the front runners of this because we have lots and lots more buds to come and two spikes in the back that have yet to open up. And then I can hopefully also show you some really, really pretty, perfect Colmenara Maasai Red blooms. Now, I prefer mine to always have the white pollen cap intact, but it is so delicate and it'll pop off very, very easily. And with the hammering that this orchid has had, well, you know, please don't be upset that I'm sounding upset. I just wish they were even more perfect than they are really because Carol Burton, Sandy Watkins, Laura Lake, World of Flowers, Kang Ho Duong, Yuli Chen, Ann Liu, Miss Angie, Sheila Broad, Harvey Schneider, Sander Sang, Felix Candelario, David Needs, Ina Slukov, Matene Andy, Jean Kenny, Plantas Epifitas y Terrestres Guatemala, Jane Sultan, Tok Tok Tracks, just know that I am ever, ever so grateful for your support on my channel. This orchid is special to me, even if the blooms aren't 100% pristine. They bloom for you and I get great, great pleasure out of them. Thank you everyone so much for your support. And I sincerely hope that you're all doing well in your part of the world.
<laughs> I just got scolded right after the intro clip. So <laughs> look at this. It has been so bad. I even forgot cousin it's glasses. It's that bad. I'm telling you, he looked at me afterwards and went, what are you doing? Where are my glasses? I'm like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. In all these weeks, there was absolutely no need for glasses, so I completely forgot about them. Anyway, Cousin It in his full glory with his glasses on. <laughs> his face afterwards, he really looked at me like with, you know, deer and headlights eyes, and I was like, what are you doing? Anyway, I decided not to repeat that clip because, yeah, it was all part and parcel of what happened today, including myself standing in sun. I'm not even entirely sure if I can trust the current status quo. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment if you've never done so before. Let me know that you're here. Your time is so appreciated. <laughs> I can see him looking at me sideways behind his glasses. Have yourself a beautiful day. Please though, on one condition that you do stay safe. Take care, bye.